Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spells Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today we're going to get laughed at over the video thing here. Uh, returning guest, returning favorite, Minnesota's best podcaster, although she's laughing during the info intro, so how good can she really and be? If I'm the best podcaster, I've got to be the only podcaster. Well, well you know, <laughs> I've never really done the official <laughs> survey, but as it's a title, I think you should be happy with it. But Jess Schrader, how are you going? It's good to see you. Good. I'm doing good. It's good to see you too. It's been a long time. It has been. It's been a long time. And actually, we're going to see each other in six weeks and counting. 42 days? 40. <clears throat> yeah, I think 42 days. Oh, my goodness. Or 40, I don't know. Between 40 and 45. Have you gotten your plane tickets? Yes, I have my plane tickets now. <laughs> <I hope so. laughs> yeah, it was left a little bit late. I think maybe last time we may have even just were tweeting about stuff or chatting on messenger i said oh, i haven't got my plane tickets yet and you found that very distressing um that i was that disorganized but we were trying to we hadn't locked in who our children were going to be with because my um my partner cat's coming over as well so we're, we're both coming over but leaving the children mm -hmm. behind i don't know about you are you bringing family or are you flying solo i'm not i'm well i'm coming with my friend so yeah it will be the longest i've been away from my kids so that is a little weighing a little heavily on me, but I'm hoping to be having so much fun that I barely give them a second thought. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good attitude to have. Absolutely. I think it'll be the same for us as well. Um, I've been to a few mm -hmm. celebrations, obviously, and been away and, and Kat's, mm -hmm. um, she went away. She went on a holiday last year, actually, just my sister for a week. And I think because I'd went to celebrations. So mm -hmm. we've done sort of... <clears throat> separate time apart holidays but there's always been sort of one parent steering the ship but um mm -hmm. yeah to do the double should be interesting but we'll we'll see you know i'm sure your your kids will survive i hope i don't think they have fully grasped how long <laughs> i'll be away yet it's probably better that they don't yeah um but i mean i obviously they'll be in great hands since they'll be with nate my yeah. um husband but yeah they tend to miss us when we're away so it might be a little tough on them but it'll go by quick <laughs> yeah i'm sure they'll survive you just let them know how much fun mum's having over in, in england and uh yeah. like you said don't give it a second thought you'll be too busy you know in those panels you know going crazy or you know up at the star wars <laughs> stage or walking the floor or doing all sorts of crazy celebration stuff Maybe running into Pedro Pascal. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he may never come home. <laughs> like, sorry, kids. This was the this was the one thing that would mean Mum would never come back. You know, <laughs> and it happened. Who knew? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um. So we actually got some celebration news today that it's not coming back next year. It's it's not coming back. They're not doing celebration in twenty twenty four. Um. It was kind of snuck in a Star Wars dot com article that came out today saying, "Hey, you know, this is why you should get to celebration. These are the cool things you can do at celebration." Blah 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 blah. blah. And by the way, it's not coming back until twenty twenty five. So you should make the most of this one. Okay. Well, at least they confirmed it's coming back in twenty twenty five. Yeah. It, it, it... Have do you, do you happen to know? Like, I know it's been going on for at least twenty years, right? Or twenty. There, there have been 20 some celebrations how much do you know the longest they've gone without one it hasn't been every year i think since no I, I think the first one was for was when revenge of the sith came out maybe i'm wrong so it's been nearly 20 years yeah um i think maybe yeah we're a bunch of fake fans we should know this i know I, i'm just thinking <laughs> maybe it might even just be the covid break the three years between the the, the covid one and the one we just had maybe um hmm. i'm just trying to look up uh celebration uh what am i looking for i know the first one was in denver venues right yeah i think so yeah cause, all right celebration here we go so the first one was in 99 okay and that was promoting phantom menace and that was in denver yep then 2002 so they three year gap between those two and that was in india indiana indianapolis that's a place. Oh, yep. That's random. 
Then okay. three years later, so they did three years between all three um, for, based on the movie. So they did them every movie year, those first three. And so the second and third one were both in Indiana, of all places. And really? then they took a two-year huh. break. Yeah, I know, back to Indiana. Then um, the 2007 was at Lo- in Los Angeles. Uh, and then, oh, that can't be right. Did they do two in one year? No. Hmm. It says here that they did one May 24 to 28, 2007 in Los Angeles. And then in July 13, 2007, they did it again in London, like a month later. Hmm. Oh. Okay, that's news to me. I never knew that, <clears throat> but okay. Here we go. So and then hmm. it was Japan in 2008, and then it was Florida in 2010 and 2012. Then it was Germany in 2013, Anaheim hmm. 2015, back to London 2016, Orlando 2017, Chicago, where we met in 2019, oh. and then Anaheim this year. So three years. There's been a couple of three-year breaks, and then obviously in London this year. And then yeah, it won't be one for another two years after this. So I actually thought there'd be more people really sad, but it seemed to be a lot of people going, oh, that'll give me time to save up. Yeah. I mean, this one was less than a year. Yeah. It's right? really, just a- it's really snuck up. I mean, obviously you didn't go to, you went out and home this year. So you must be sort of itching to get back. Yes. I told myself when I bowed out of Anaheim, Wherever it is next time, I'm going. And then I was like, oh, London? <laughs> He's like, oh, man. <laughs> but then my friend, um, I was actually um, on like a remote kind of island in the middle of this huge lake in Minnesota at a friend's cabin. And my friend texted me and said, I think we're going to go. Um, her and her husband and daughter, I'm going with them. She's like, I think we're going to go. Do you want to come with us? And I'd already had like two or three seltzers. So I was like, sure, just on a whim kind of. And then I turned to Nate. I'm like, you, are you okay with me going to London for like a week and a half? He's like, yeah, we'll be fine. I'm like, okay, count me in. <laughs> it's always nice when you get that response. So, I said that to, when I came back from um, Anaheim and I'd been away for, you know, a week or week and a bit and um, saw my family and I just said, oh, next year they're doing it in London. And Kat was like, oh, great. You'll, that'll be great. Good for you to go do that. And I was just like, ah, oh. <laughs> what an understanding part. <laughs> and nope, I just, I'm going to those two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you been to London before? I've never been to London. And you're staying and in... And I'm obsessed with... What was that? Yeah, you're obsessed with, sorry, what? Oh, like I was an English major. So like British literature, British history, all of it. I'm, I've always been super into all of that. I've always wanted to see the Tower of London, just all the history. Um, so I'm super stoked. It's like a, definitely a bucket list for me. Item. Oh, exciting. And you're um, staying in Bethnal Green. <laughs> Is that correct? Actually, we're staying in Ilford, which I don't think there's anything exciting there. Il- <laughs> which say Ilford but Guilford? Ilford. Ilford. It's I L F O R D. Oh, Ilford. Is that in that's outside it's London, isn't too, it? Um, yeah, it's about uh actually tw- I checked. It's about a 25-minute tube ride from Hackney Central to where I am. Oh, yeah. Further okay. away from London. I thought you were staying in Bethel Green for some reason or is that just for the is I that just that for we celebration? Were. I think we were like we submitted but then so we try. We had to like submit a request for the Airbnb, and it ended up getting denied. So then we found this place. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, yeah, look, you're not a million miles away. Mm-hmm. To be honest, you're fine. England's so well connected on. Is so well connected by transport. You're actually on. Yeah, so you're actually not that far away because you're on that right side of town. You're on the east side of of the city as well, which is where the um, yeah. you know, where the thing is. So you'll be yeah, you're better. Mm-hmm. Get a train down. You probably go. Where would you go that way? Yeah, you probably go down and then go through to the other way. And then you make your way back. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether you can custom. actually go down. It might be better to change at Stratford. But anyway, train talk. <laughs> you can work that out. It's very yeah. easy. It's very easy to get I've around. I've been studying Google Maps um, in all my free time. <laughs> <laughs> so how many days have you got? Are you hanging around after or before getting there before celebration? I assume you're doing touristy stuff around the convention. 
Um, so we fly in, well, we leave here on the 5th and then we'll get there on the 6th yep. of April and then we'll be in the London area until the 11th. So we're going to have to cram in sightseeing. Um, well, actually we don't have a ticket for Saturday. So hopefully if the Mandalorian panel is on Saturday, I'm going to have a really hard time, um, uh. assuming there is one. Uh, there was some but so we know released it, weren't there. I thought um, there were some day tickets that said I already gone. They did, but we didn't. We when we initially got our tickets, we just got single days because I think the four day was sold out. Yep. Um, we didn't get Saturday, and then so we were gonna do a bunch of sightseeing on Saturday, and then I don't know, cram it in wherever we can besides that until we leave on the eleventh, and then we go north to. The Chester Liverpool area. Yep. And we'll be there until the sixteenth, and then we come home. Ah, very nice. A little bit of northern, a bit of northern action there. You'll be able to get a we'll fair check out Wales. Yeah, you better get a lot done um, up there. Everything's pretty yeah. Close. I'm hoping to do something at Edinburgh one day. It's been a oh Edinburgh. Couple yep. Hours there. Edinburgh. Okay, say it again. <laughs> Edinburgh. 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 I don't want to be like <laughs> the new announces everything. Well, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> Edinburgh. Okay. Edinburgh. We'll practice. We'll practice. I... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. Well, we're doing, we're getting there on the the Wednesday, which I think is the 5th. And then mm -hmm. we'll be there at the convention. And then Tuesday, we're going to Portugal for a few days. And then coming back to London on the Friday, and we've got a few days there. I'm catching. I used to live there, so I'm catching up with a bunch of friends, sort of in between as well, and hopefully getting to a football game as well. Um, so it's yeah, it's all looking pretty like it's locked in. Um, I'm just sort of hoping that everyone just gets to hang out at the pub and stuff after the you know after the after yeah. the celebration and does a bit of socialising and things. We've got some people staying near us, but we'll just have to make sure that we've got you know something that everybody can get to and just sort of hang around and enjoy that night before is always good the night before celebration catching up with people okay. so yeah we'll all be on the messengers making sure we check where everybody is and find out what yeah. panels we need to I'm get into so you just on are you on pedro watch are you like you got to get in that that mando panel yeah um that would be well you know what i'm also excited for the return of the jedi um anniversary celebration bit i'm sure they'll have a panel for that mm -hmm. um since it's my favorite star wars movie nice um so i'd say those are well you know those are the two things i'm most excited about now but as they announce the things we don't know about yet maybe something else will excite me just as much <laughs> it's I always the know what it is yet. well it's always the unknowns as well that sometimes be the, are the best sometimes just some random small panel you go into or you know bumping into people on the floor or something you do outside of the it, it should be a little bit more relaxed after the like anaheim was so busy because they did like disneyland all the disney stuff was around it so it was just these crazy long nights and stuff like chicago was somewhat similar but it didn't there wasn't putting like trips to Disneyland in between, which I felt was just exhausted me basically because Disneyland's really intense. Yeah. Um, so 2025, do you assume they'll just come back to America for celebration if they've done Europe and then missed, missed a year? You think Americans would get really mad if they did it, not America again? Um, I mean, I don't want to sound selfish, but I <laughs> guess I would assume slash hope that they would. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll do that double thing that they did when they did one in Los Angeles and, and in England at the same time. Although I don't think they'll go back to Europe for a bit, but that would be very, I would be very, yeah. very surprised if they didn't do it back in the States again. Um, a lot of people seem to assume that it's going to be in Orlando. That's kind of what I was thinking too. And then if they do it that way, I'll probably bring at least my oldest son for sure. Um, he's been wanting to go and... Um, I just haven't been willing to take him quite. <laughs> yet, How old will he be in twenty twenty five? 
Oh, geez, he'll be 12, so oh, well he, enough. We've got to bring him to the pub by then. You know, he can just come out to the bars yeah. and stuff afterwards. <laughs> I've seen photos of your husband. Mm-hmm. He's huge. He'd probably be as big as him by by 12. He'd probably be able to pass. Yeah, almost as tall as me on it. He's uh, already just going gangbusters with the height. So <laughs> There you go. That'll be <laughs> fine then. Um, yeah, I mean, I've never been to Orlando. It's, it's a bit more of a mission. Oh, it's just a longer flight because all the flights to Australia from Australia to go via LA and then you've got to fly to the other side of the country. But we kind of did that with Chicago anyway. It's all right. We'll we'll go yeah, anywhere. The Australians yeah, will that, just go anywhere. That's what I love about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the one so, when, when they actually announce one in Australia and everybody will be like, oh, God. Be- and we're like, hey, man, we've, we've fronted <laughs> up. We've the flow to England. We've flown to America twice. We've done all these things. That would be a good I finally go to Australia and check it out. Oh, that would be great. I will. <clears throat> that would be yeah. great. I was put, I was putting photos of the Melbourne Exhibition Centre on Twitter today going, come on, we've got a really nice, big, shiny Exhibition Centre here. We could do it. We could easily pull it off. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to convince Pedro Pascal to come for a panel, but... Well, it's no skin off his paycheck, so <laughs> you can make it happen. <laughs> can just tie it in with a holiday or something, you know, like... If they do it around when it's warm enough, you can you can tie it in with a with a beach holiday or something. Um, yeah. So speaking of Pedro, we uh, mm-hmm. we got to start talking Mando season three. You uh, you ready That's to right. roll? You counting out the days? I actually have a countdown on my whiteboard oh, on really? my office door at work, so I am counting down the days. <laughs> you literally. literally are counting down <laughs> the days. So you, I did not know that. That's exciting. Um, mm-hmm. What do you reckon about, um, like basically resetting Grogu's back? Do you have an opinion on this? Do you, do you feel like it was a they sent him away and then they just brought him back in another in a spin-off show and now he's back all of a sudden? Like, do you feel like you have to do a lot of explaining to people who are like we put the Mandalorian on and didn't Yoda go off with Luke Skywalker last time and now he's back and you're the Star Wars person? So what's going on? Yeah, I guess I hadn't really. F- realize until until i listened to was it the episode of the most recent one with tom where you guys were talking about how people might not the normies the casual fans like the ones that we are fans that we um answer questions for over regular with, and, yeah. with the baby yoda yeah. the newbies <laughs> we welcome them um who maybe wouldn't have watched the book of boba fett yeah it didn't occur to me that obviously there's going to be people that might not know and that there might be confusion. The thing um, about it, and I think Star Wars has kind of an unfortunate pattern of bringing people back from the dead or (laughs) um, quickly flipping these huge life altering decisions is it's, it's just the stakes never seem that high anymore because um. They could, ju- I mean, now we many opportunities just know, like- to just to do because you know, like back in the day, there were three movies, and then they did three more movies, mm-hmm. and it was you know, <clears throat> 15, 20 years between trilogies and three years between movies. Now it's just hey, we we could we've got another thing coming out in a few months. We can just undo that anyway. We don't need to do any anything life altering. We can fix pretty quick because we've got another TV show or something to 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 back it up on. But I mean, <laughs> even like you know. Ray's heritage they kind of just went and <laughs> mucked around with that okay. anyway <laughs> I was about to say well they won't do that in movies I'm like actually they just totally went and did that in a movie anyway but uh is it ca- having their cake and eating it too I think the expression is yeah I just it kind of bothers me that the emotional impact of some I mean, it still made it. I mean, it was still impactful the first time. Obviously, we saw the finale with Luke and Grogu and Din had to say their goodbyes. Uh, you can't take away the first time that you saw that, and it was heartbreaking. And you're just like, well, now what? Um, but then you kind of just feel cheat, like cheated. Like, well, wait, wait a minute. Let me have my pain for a little bit. Don't just give me back the thing I wanted to have happen so quickly. Like, make us work for it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like a great romance that, that that ends. 
and you're like, oh, well, I guess it's for the best and they'll always have Paris and whatever else. And then they just got back together <laughs> like a few weeks later. <laughs> I said, everything's, everything's fine. We, we go. Oh. Turns, out, turns out we're still in love, everybody. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm interested to see if they address it in some way for folks that maybe didn't watch the Book of Boba Fett. I'm just, I'm just um, waiting for the I mean, questions. I'm sure well, I'd like my partner Kat. She likes the Mandalorian. She loves Grogu, and I and I kind of went, oh, look, I think we should watch at least three or four episodes of maybe it's three or four, two or three episodes of the Book of Boba Fett before Mando season three. I think we're probably going to watch. She's like, uh, I don't really care about that. like, do I have to? <laughs> we kind of just wait for Mando. I'm like, well, it kind of ties in, like it's got stuff in it, and like, but I think she just thinks that in my Star Wars brain, I think everything's... Imp- like, she's looking at me going, oh, you just think everything's important. And so you're thinking that this Star Wars thing that I need to know is important. Where I'm actually literally like, no, literally, like, Grogu is back at the start of this after you were, <laughs> after you were bawling on the couch about him leaving at the end of the last thing. And now uh-huh. you're going to put... We're going to watch The Mandalorian next week. And you're going to sit there and go like what's going on <laughs> what happens so i've either got to just explain it flippantly and be like oh he's back now or i've got to try and get her to sit through three episodes of book of boba fett well yeah then she's she's gonna think oh they must have had this really exciting fun like emotional reunion right and then it's like oh <laughs> no he just kind of showed up in the car in a car by himself and, and <laughs> inserted himself into the finale and then <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of. I mean, I think you're a similar boat to me. Like you're the Star Wars person that people kind of go to when they have questions, and whether it's work colleagues or or friends or relatives and things. So I'm kind of just waiting for the phone to start going or getting a few messages or people kind of, you know, I I work from home, so luckily I don't have to be walking down a hallway and interact with people at work like that. But I know you're you're in the office. You probably <laughs> get that, especially if you've got Days to Mandalorian on your whiteboard on the door of your office? <laughs> well, most of the people at my work that would be watching The Mandalorian are that I know of are pretty big Star Wars fans, so they have likely also watched The Book of Boba Fett. Okay. But I'm sure, um, yeah, some casual friends or acquaintances may reach out to me. They're resident Star Wars expert, even though... When you put me in a room with the clear striblings of the world, I'm just, I can barely <laughs> hold my own. <laughs> oh, well, you know. But to them, I'm a huge Star Wars expert. <laughs> she, she looks innocent, but she'll tear you to pieces, you know. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so you, the reason I invited you on and to think to do it, not that I don't think about getting you on the podcast sometimes anyway, but the impetus was you put some tweet on about, because uh, you're watching The Last of Us. That's obviously Pedro Pascal oh, yeah. as well, and I think you took you took offense to the to a question to a response I had on there. I think it was something about like who oh, yes. Yes, yes. who relies That's on right. someone more or who needs somebody more. Can you remember what what the context was? No, the question was who does Pedro love more, Grogu or Ellie? Oh, no, you're talking you about Pedro. The, are you all talking about Pedro the actor? Like, which does he love more? Or are you talking about Joel or Mando? Who loves more? Who? Oh, that's a good question, Josh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you ask Pedro Pascal on the street, you're like, who do you love more, Grogu? Oh. He's like, well, one of them's a. They're both characters, but like Bella Ramsey's a, okay. a real person. Yes. So bring that one, yes, but. No, I guess in my head I was thinking, does Joel love Ellie more or does Din love Grogu more? Right. Do you want to change your answer now? Uh, <laughs> Although, you, no, after the last episode. Have you, have you, be, no, you haven't played the game, so you don't know what happens, do you, yet? Um, I've not played the game, but I've been on the hashtag enough to spoil a lot of it um, because, you know, the people who are in the know with the source material of something that is an adaptation, they need to let everyone know that they know. And right. so like they, you okay. know, well, there's I, lots I, of spoilers. Yeah. All right. Well, I won't, I, I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody who's listening. Cause I don't, don't I, you know, I want people to enjoy it. So I'll only talk about what we know up to this point in time in the last of us, what's happening right now. And mm-hmm. we'll talk about what we know in Mandalorian. Cause I, I don't know any more than anybody else. Cause I've only seen as much as you have. So who loves, Joel, hmm. 
I mean, at, at the point Mando did in the tr- show, Mando tried I to send him away that. a lot more than like Joel st- has stuck to his yeah, mission. I mean, he, he kind of flaked out hmm. in the last bit, but he didn't. He didn't go through with it. Mando did go through with handing yeah. Grogu over for his for his. Because he's cult, because he's because he's because his cult leader told him to basically, he was just he was looking for someone to tell him to get. Rid. He's just, Will somebody tell me what I'm supposed to do with this kid? Um, well, I think Den knew his lifestyle was not the most ideal lifestyle to raise a child in, and Grogu obviously is very special and needs to be with someone who can help him hone his special powers mm. um but i was like they're back together now and uh he's very happy about <laughs> For it now. Really. anyway who knows what happens <laughs> but i mean ali you know ali could save the world as well so i'm sure there's definitely a lot more obligation that joel feels at least up until pro- probably quite recently in the series i think it's sort of turned mm-hmm. the last episode or two that they're you know forming a proper bond yep. before it was more like a mission and you know, I think even she's just, cargo. Yeah, he was he was cargo. And I think even despite the fact that she could save the world, it was more of an obligation to test. I think that he felt like that he had to sort of see the mission through, um, which is probably shifting now. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then Pedro Pascal. Let's let's flip the question. Well, Pedro Pascal, who does he like more? Um, Not Bella. I think or, yeah, I think Bella's a real sorry, being a real Bella. person <laughs> probably seals oh, the deal for that. Their interviews together that I've seen are so adorable and pure and just give me joy. So yeah, I they keep seem thinking to have a like every time I, I I say her name Bella Ramsey, I keep thinking I'm mm-hmm. stupidly using her Game of Thrones name and not her real name just because there's Ramsey's in Game of Thrones. So I keep going, oh, Bella Ramsey. I'm like, oh, no, that can't be her name. She must, she, that's, that's, there's Ramsey's in Game of Thrones. That can't be right. I'm like, oh, no, that's not her. Well, Ramsey's the first name in Game of Thrones of like one of the most evil characters. Oh, I know, but I don't think it through. I just kind of, I click get Ramsey with Game <laughs> of Thrones and I go, oh, well, that mustn't be her real, like it's a character's name. What's her real name again? It's like, oh, no, it is Bella Ramsey and she's Lady so and so of, um, Lyanna Stark, I think. And wait, no. Her first name in Game of Thrones is she's named after someone, another Stark. Is it Lyanna? Someone's gonna bug me now. Let me pull up my IMDb. I've got it. She plays yeah, Lyanna Morm- Mormont. Oh, Mormont. Oh yeah, that's right. She's not, duh. Okay. There you go. But that does. But Bella Ramsey sounds like a Game of Thrones name as well. It does. It could be Lyanna Le- 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 Mormont playing Bally Ra- Bella Ramsey in Game of Thrones, and nobody would bat an eyelid. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, now now that I understand your thought process, I will forgive you and also agree with you. All right. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm glad that we didn't have to get into it over a pint of beer in London. You know that the argument just <laughs> went. Maybe we still will. There might still be time for that as well. Um, I'm sure yeah. you could polish off a, pa- a pint of beer without too much trouble. Is that a standard? Is that a standard beer serving I- in Minnesota? If you go to a bar and order a beer, it is. But I'm a little worried for myself because. I, over the last couple of years, have gravitated towards seltzers. You guys do seltzers on there? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like much lighter. It's like low calorie, like four or five percent alcohol. Very, um, I don't know, easy, I guess, um, on you. And I now am at the point where just one, two seltzers for sure will have me fairly buzzed. So I'm a little <laughs> nervous about. You can There's get other drinks in England. It isn't just all beer. Like you, you know, if you wanted to get a well, gin and no, tonic I feel like or I something, want, you... when in London, you have to have the beer. Like, well, yeah, that's have, true. Have the... I mean, <laughs> when I live there, you could go to it. They have these places called off licenses, which is effectively like a little convenience store, um, but they're tiny. That they're you know they're like really mini supermarket sort of corner stores, but they sell alcohol in them, and you could buy you know, a six pack of tall beers, those long ones for five pounds and stuff, which is about you know $9. So if you really want to get lots of cheap beer, you can. I don't know what it costs for a beer in London now. It's probably a lot more expensive than when I lived there. And it probably also depends where you go. Um, but the thing is also, there's no shortage of places to find a drink. Like there'll be a bar, if not at the convention center, probably across the road from the convention center, whether or not that's where everybody wants to drink or not is another question, you know. 
Well, actually, I studied that in my Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, you're all over it. I know. And it doesn't sound like, okay, are there bars around here? Like we're, you know, trying to get the lay of the land, like where, where we might meet up for a drink. And I, I didn't really see anything. That's it's, it's a nearby. funny little area but over there. Cause it's, it's, in the yeah, it's the, oh, it's a new part of the town. Cause they sort of develop that part. Cause the old, um, the old, uh, part of the city, you can't build skyscrapers. You're not, you didn't used to be able to, you can a bit more now, but a lot of the sort of new businesses gravitated added to the East side of the city where they built, infrastructure so that's why the convention center is there and there's an airport out there and there's a whole bunch of stuff canary wharfs out there so it's a, li- a little bit more steel and glass it's a little bit more modern architecture whereas you know if you go into the city it's a lot more old school pubs on every corner kind of thing so where we're staying in hackney which is where i used to live there's stacks of pubs so like there's a park right where i used to live and where we're staying called london fields um and it has a a market on every saturday called broadway market they do a market down there and there's food stalls and stuff and there's pubs everywhere and i would love for everybody to go down broadway market and we go to the pubs along there you know personally just because that's a great spot or there's a place not far from there called columbia road and they do a flower market on sunday mornings and it's like you've stepped into harry potter land it's very old school flowers people everywhere and there's some nice pubs along there they're the they're the little london things i encourage people to do but um there'll be something it'll it'll be it won't be hard to find a drink in england you'll be able to get your two seltzers i reckon (laughs) i will not order a seltzer I will be. Are you worried that like the music will stop? It'll be right when the music stops and everybody just drops their glasses and looks over at the American lady at the bar. (laughs) Yep, just basic, boring American with her seltzer. No, I will try to do as the British do and have beer and apparently tea. Oh, you are. God, love a good cup of tea. (laughs) Don't get me started on the tea here, but uh, yeah um you know we've got a little flat so you know hopefully we'll have you know if people want to congregate where we are before or after and things we're not really close to convention center but we are somewhat in that area so you know i'll make you a nice cup of tea if you want a cup of tea you can go out for a full english breakfast or or you know all sorts of things the full the full experience um yeah i want it all (laughs) I i want to try it all yeah absolutely um all right, let's just go back around. Let's go back around to Mando. Start next week. What are you? Okay. Let's do, let's go predictions here. What are you? What are you predicting is going to happen? In, are we just going to have Mandalorians fighting Mandalorians? Or is there more to it? Um, I so as shows, you know, go into season four or three and four and on. I always start to get nervous because it just seems like nothing ever compares to the first season of a show that I love or, Mm -hmm. um, and, um, I wouldn't say I was super titillated by the, um, trailers I've seen so far. Um, but that's not to say that I won't be, um, in love with this season. I'm mostly excited to see, the interaction between Din and oh gosh, stop! I'm blanking. Bo-Katan. Um, thank you. Yes, Bo-Katan. Um, interested to see their relationship, or are they going? It, obviously, it seems like they team up, um, but it'd be interesting to see tension for a while over that uh, dark saber. Mm. Um, and how's that going to play out? Um, I know I saw an interview with Pedro where they asked him about it um, on one of the late shows uh, over here in America where we have plenty of those. And he said he hinted at multiple epic battles, not just one. Right. Cool. He said he, what he could say was that Grogu was protected and protecting so obviously it seems that Grogu will be using his force powers to save Zaddy at one point. Or Unchecked another. as well. <laughs> <clears throat> which I find which I find actually the most fascinating part of it. Like if they're going to and I think I said this to Tom last week, if they're going to have Grogu leave Luke and basically, you know, go back to Din, but he's still got his powers, I wanna see him get a little dangerous, get a little unpredictable. That he's he's sort of 
you know, he could start causing a bit of havoc and trouble. He's harder to control. And, you know, if he's a gone from a three-year-old to a four-year-old or whatever the equivalent is now, there's a few more temper tantrums in there and a few more throwing stuff and, and whatever else. i got a four-year-old, so, yeah. yeah. Um, about that, so I'm trying to... I, I'm trying, I've been trying to do the math in my head. So Yoda died when he was 900 years old. He started training Jedi at about 100 years old because he said 800 years I've been training Jedi. So say he was about 100-ish when he started training Jedi. Grogu was 50. So, and like, mm. make it make sense. <laughs> yeah, in 50 make more sense, years. Does it? Like, that means He's halfway was, to the point where Yoda would be, be nine when he was training Jedi. <laughs> or, or Yoda was the, if we're equating it to human years, Yoda was right out of college. So he'd be like 22 in human years. Yeah. But that would make Grogu like 11 in human years. And he hasn't spoken yet. And I'm not saying I want to hear him speak because I think that would be very off putting. <laughs> Well, we, in that but does tells, he need a speech therapist? Can we be worried for him? <laughs> oh, is this the like? Is this the the thing they're going to drop at the end that he's going to like? That's the the stinger at the end of this season where he's like, "Daddy," or no, something, like like, I don't like when Maggie Simpson spe- I don't spoke or something like that. It's gonna, yeah. I, I mean, they established in that Tales of the Jedi episode that had Yaddle that that Yoda just speaks funny. He just he's just a bit of a weirdo. Like she just speaks like a normal creature because <laughs> it was it bryce dallas howard oh. who was doing her voice have you seen that tales of the jedi those cartoon the cartoons on disney we start we watched the first couple we haven't seen them all oh so there's a yaddle one so there's one that they do with yaddle okay. you know the lady yoda and it's bryce dallas howard mm-hmm. doing a voice and she's just like hi I'm, I'm yaddle nice to meet you that this is how i talk i don't she doesn't talk weird or she doesn't talk in riddles or backwards or even like Rrr, like she doesn't so grogu could just have a normal talking voice it could just be I don't know. Anybody. It could be Josh Gad. The guy does Olaf from, from, from Frozen or something. I don't know why that popped in my head. I've got a lot of, there's a lot of Frozen that gets watched in this house. I would uh, be 100% okay if we never hear Grogu speak. Hmm. Putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can always undo it afterwards if you don't like it. They can always, you know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they can undo anything. Um, yeah, I yeah the Mandalore stuff. I don't know, I don't know. It, it it just finished so well. It finished so perfectly last time. I know they were never going to just do two, but I yeah. Well, can yeah. it can it sustain interest if it's just Mandalorians fighting Mandalorians? It was funny because yeah. I I watched season two like the last week or so, sort of in preparation. Um, I had a few nights where Cat was out. And I was like, you know what? I'll go back and I'll re I'll rewatch season two. So I ended up watching quite a lot of episodes in a row. And there's a lot of shooting stormtroopers. There must have been four or five episodes where it was just like all these stormtroopers were getting shot over and over again. And I kept thinking, like, oh man, they they tend to shoot a lot of stormtroopers in this. But I think oh, I'd prefer that than just them shooting the Empire. Yeah, there's like the Boba Fett episode where they shoot a bunch of them. The Bo-Katan episode where they break into the ship, there's a bunch of stormtroopers mm-hmm. that get okay. shot on that one. Um, the one where they break into the base with Grief Karga and, and Cara Dune, there's a bunch of stormtroopers they're shooting that one. Uh, when they oh, break, yeah. and obviously the last one where they, they break into the into Moff Gideon's ship, there's like probably two-thirds of them. Oh, and also the where they... Um, uh, they have uh, what's his name, Bill Burr, and they break into the base to get the the terminal. A lot of stormtroopers shooting in that too. It never occurred to me, I guess, because I just watched them week to week, and then I watched them back to back. And I'm like, every every episode's got about twenty stormtroopers being shot down. Hmm. I never thought of that. And I guess that's Star Wars. Um. But... Yeah. Uh. I. You know what? I don't feel like the trailer has really shown us much. So I think a lot of it's going to be. A surprise, and you know, you know how they kept Grogu under wraps. They've never showed him in obviously the mar- any marketing yeah. at all, and didn't have any merchandise ready to go and all of that. I just I, it makes me wonder if there's going to be another, or if they're trying to create another equivalent to obviously not a cute small creature that we all fall in love with, but something equally as like 
mind blowing like for Star Wars. Bombshell, sort of, yeah. Like, like what if? Yeah, like, maybe that's why I feel like we've gotten so little out of the trailers. What if uh, Princess Leia showed up? Would you be able yeah. to separate the the weirdness of them doing a CGI, fully CGI Carrie Fisher, um, as opposed to like Gator C. Leia? This feels like sacrilegious to say, but I feel like we've gotten enough Leia for a little bit. Like, Ooh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it's going to be overkill. Like, we can't keep bringing out the, like, parading Leia out. But maybe something along that vein, like something. I don't know. They, but I mean, huh? Lando. It's ten years before Ray is born, so we can't see. We're not going to see anything Ray related yet. I mean, they're going to maybe lead Ben this. Solo. Young ben Solo somehow. I mean, he just by himself with no layer and no. <laughs> I mean, there's there's all the, the weird. The, obviously, there's the weirdness of you know Carrie's no longer with us. I mean, at least with with CGI, Luke mm-hmm. like Hamill does the does the, the movements and stuff and they kind of copy it. I think Leia's a kind of a bit more of a murky gray era. I suppose if, if her daughter was involved somehow, it'd probably be okay. But even then, I don't know. But um, I don't know. Like maybe, the, I mean, they hinted at the sort of the cloning stuff I and mean, that whole idea that the reason the Empire want Grogu is because he's got his magic blood. He's got force blood. Um, do they lean mm-hmm. into the all that weirdness of Ray's parents being cloned, being a clone and all that cloned Palpatine stuff are we gonna all the furious backpedaling to make Rise of Skywalker make sense maybe it'll help make it more sense I don't know <laughs> well, I was just started reading the novelization of the Rise of Skywalker hoping that something in that book in the novelization will help me come to terms with a few of the things I didn't like as much in the movie um, and I just started so I can't say for sure yet if it has but i will say that um there's a lot of i i like to read the novelizations because usually you'll get a couple just a little more insight to maybe what the character was thinking or mm. a little bit more dialogue and there's been a lot of that in the novelization and for example i found out that me and ray have the same favorite color green <laughs> <laughs> really that was how does that work yeah. in context is just because she lived on a desert and didn't see um, green. okay so i'll tell you so you know the scene right before they leave, I think it's called Agent Kloss or whatever the planet the base Resistance base is currently on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right before she leaves on the Falcon with um, the crew, and she's kind of gazing off into the jungle. And Poe says, "Like, are you okay? Or are you ready to go? Or something?" And she just is like very introspective, like, "Yeah, or I'm okay." Well, in that moment, she's looking out into all of the green. And thinking how beautiful this planet is and how it's it's her favorite color green, like like life. I'm like, hey, fa- green's my favorite color. Me and Ray have the same favorite color. It's pretty neat. <laughs> I can forgive all of all the things wrong with this film now because Ray's got the same favorite color as me. <laughs> Another funny um, little back story tidbit that uh, was in the book so far is General Hux um, had a real problem with Kylo Ren's hair like how disorderly it was. And when he becomes Supreme Leader, the first thing he's going to do is make Kylo Ren chop off all of his hair. (laughs) That sounds like a man who's very jealous that he can't get his hair to look like that, (laughs) don't you think? (laughs) I don't know. I was just that. (laughs) I enjoyed it. I thought it was... I just remember... I think it's very well done so far. I just remember thinking like when I saw uh, The Force Awakens... And the first moment that Kylo Ren takes his helmet off in that, I think when he's, I think Ray is tied up or whatever it is, and he kind of pulls it off, and you know, you see sort of handsome Adam Driver there. But I always remember thinking like, oh, he's got a very good buffont of hair. Like that was always the kind of the thing that I was like, oh, he's got a he's got a very buffont, you know, thing of hair there, which I don't think it ever really gets that that buffy anywhere else in. Uh... Yeah, I mean, considering the helmet, you, you yeah, you'd think it'd all be sort of, impossible. you know, it'd all be a bit greasy and a bit yeah. sort of. I guess he just conditions and washes every day. Yeah, I don't know. He probably wants like to know the secret. He was putting that helmet in, you know, he was putting the helmet in the thing of ashes, you know, because it was all kind of hardcore. And like maybe he did mm-hmm. have to wash his hair every day because it was always just, you know, full of ash in the helmet and he would just get this really grubby hair if he didn't do it. Maybe there's some way for him to like force fluff his hair. 
<laughs> and so the first thing he does is when the helmet comes off is he uses force so like, like foop, just pops out <laughs> yep. and sometimes he goes too far and he's got this big sort of like buffy afro kind of going on <laughs> force proof force proofing um uh-huh. well one funny funny tidbit about uh britain and uh, about london in particular is that the water is all uh recycled so it is actually quite sedimenty the water in england so sometimes if you have a cup of tea you get to the bottom of your mug and there's a little bit of sediment in the bottom of your of your cup which does mean that if you have a shower your hair sometimes feels dirtier than when it went in and it's really it's really noticeable okay. like i never noticed so much living there but then when i would come back to australia for christmas and wash my hair in the shower i'd be like oh my god i can just feel the cleanness of my water my, my hair because we don't recycle our water here so i don't know i mean you're a little bit out of town so it might you might be in a different catchment you might not be coming through the london catchments you're not that far out but okay. you may have a shower and be like why does my hair feel like it's dirty I <laughs> would... when i went in you'll need the force poof to to like give it a bit of body um where I live, we have some of the best water in the country because we're right on the shores of Lake Superior. So I would probably notice such a thing. Oh, we're well, quite lucky go. with our water. Yeah, you so see, you, you, you're coming from the clear, the, the pristine, yeah, Minnesota yep. you know, drinking water, whatever it is. <laughs> I just remember the drinking water the being best. okay. The tap water here is incredible. Like, it's the best. Okay. As she picks up a thing of water, just to, <laughs> like you're in a Minnesota tourism <laughs> video, like come for the beautiful views and vistas and have the purest drinking water in the country. Yeah, it's true. And people visit and then when they live here, move away, they always, one of the things they always seem to talk about is, oh, I miss the water. The tap water is so good. I'll be curious to get your, um, that'll be the first thing I ask you when I see you. Because, you know, I've got to do all these celebration blog pods while I'm there. So I'll be sticking your microphone in your face probably all the time. I'll be like, so Jess, what's your what's your feeling on the London Wall? Let's get that bug of the panels and what panel you got into. And if you saw Pedro Pascal today, what's your, what's your <laughs> report on the water here? Like, yeah, not good. Do you need the forest proof yet or not? <laughs> need the, do need the, how's the hair looking? Is it looking a little bit, a little bit greasy? Which is good because if everybody's got greasy hair, they'll want to keep their beanies on all the time as well because they'll be trying to oh, there you go. hide their... Yeah. Um, uh, which are uh, on there, which the or I got the, the the sample back, the sample design sent to me, and done the full order now, which is good. So hopefully they'll they've got six weeks to get here, which um, hopefully should I'm be so excited to finally join the Beanie Club. I know. I'm not that it matters since you're a beanie making machine in your own right. You probably just look at this and go, "This is the cheapest piece of crap built." Like, what? This cost me like twenty dollars. Like, what the hell, man? Like, I could do this with my, with my eyes closed. I'm like, yeah. No, no. I'll be excited. I wonder if anyone has. I mean, Catherine must have one of each. Does someone have the full set? Does Catherine does. Catherine? Uh, Turbo does. There's a few people that do because even a few people who didn't go this year got one. Uh, who else? Some of the scruffy looking podcaster guys have got all three. Um, there's a few people who are go- who aren't coming to London who asked if they could have one anyway. And I said, that's fine. I've got to fill an order of at least 50. So <laughs> if you want one, you can have one. No, there's a few. There's probably, I'd say probably at least half of the people who've got them will have all three. So which hmm. effectively just means that the same people are just getting them over and over. But if that's, you know, that's what you need in order for it to happen. Well, that's what they want, that they keep wanting it is obviously a yeah. collector's item. Well, it'll be nice. To, <laughs> it'll be nice to take a break for a year, to be honest. Although I have to say I had to get a new supplier after the Shemozzle last time. And this has been reasonably smooth, even though I don't have them yet. And if they turn up in a reasonable time, at least I'll be like, well, good. I can rely, somewhat rely on this new, you know, supplier. So... Hopefully, when we get to 2025, people still want it. Um, you know, And if they're in Australia, <laughs> that would be even better because they don't have to try to put them in a suitcase. <laughs> well, it would only work. Do you guys in- have to wear it? get cold enough there to actually wear? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get cold. Win- yeah, we get winter. Our winter. Our winter will probably be roughly what it is in London when we get there, which is about 13 degrees. I think they said the average temperature for London is about 13 degrees. Um which hang on, I'm going to convert for you now before you ask. It's about 48, uh, I bet. It's about 50, I also 50, 50 or 55. Yeah. Which is probably so a walk I did in the, the park conversion. For you. It is. 
Um, it's negative 10 Celsius here right now. Oh, that's, that's that awful. Kind of- no, we never do that. Like our, <laughs> our, our dead of winters, <laughs> our dead of winters at night, we might get down to one or two very, very rarely. There might be one or two days where it'll get there. And Melbourne's, because we're Southern, we'll, we get colder winters in some places, but there's no negatives. We're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing any of that nonsense. <laughs> at London, it'll be all right in April. It'll be, it'll be sort of grayish and, you know, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Good for good for tourism and around. You better get on a, a, a up top bus or something and and zoom around and see a bunch of stuff. I'd recommend doing that just to you know you can always go yeah. back to places. Everything's quite close and you can jump up and down on the tube, up and down on and off on the tube if you want mm-hmm. to look at things closer. But you know if you get on one of the the, the buses, it'll take you around central London. You'll go past Trafalgar Square, Westminster, Westminster Abbey, St Paul's, all those places, Leicester Square, all that. You'll kind of you can cut through that quite quick. It's all quite close that you can hit all that central london stuff pretty easily you can go down to my old work place the westminster palace so that i used to work there so um you did yeah yeah my one of my first jobs i was i got hired to do the houses of parliament website so our offices were in a building across the road but we used to go we could go into we had full access to the palace so where the house of commons house of lords was and everything so yeah i got to climb big ben so that's wow. cool. Yeah. Which my daughter, I think it's the most thing my daughters are impressed most that I've ever done, I think. Climb Big Ben? Yeah. <laughs> well, cl- I mean, you just go up the stairs. It's not like it's it's not like yeah. mountain climbing or anything. It's, there's not like... Can anyone do that? Or is that like a special access thing? No, it's a special access thing. You, okay. It can be requested. I, yeah, I think it's more employees or if you know somebody. Uh, they do, they open the... They open Westminster Palace uh, in the summer during summer recess, which basically when the government's not sitting, so you can do tours and go mm-hmm. around and have a look at stuff. But um, if I had people coming and staying, we would just you know take them through with our staff passes and stuff, and we could go most places, take them to the dining rooms for lunch and all that kind of thing. So there was a, a you could sit out on the in front of the House of Lords along the Thames like on the on, on that side and then just sit out and eat lunch and look over the bridge and look down the down the river and stuff it was all very nice so yeah, yeah. things to do there'll still be plenty to do if i if i was still living in london <laughs> and celebration was coming and i knew everybody and i was still working there which would be crazy because that means i would have been there 15 years but even so if i could have taken everybody on a tour <laughs> inside the thing i'd try and take you know a whole bunch of star wars <laughs> fans through, through the house of commons the house of lords we could have all been in cosplay. It would have been like nothing we've seen before. Yeah, that's right. You could all just like, <laughs> everybody could have just dressed in their royal in their royal Naboo garb or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. We're, we're winding this up. Winding this. We're getting to the okay. end of this. And we, I mean, again, we're going to be we're going to be hanging out in six weeks, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, it's just podcasting. Any other final Mando? Like, what do you not want to see in Mando season three? What will like make you cross if something happens in it? Um, can I say Cara Dune? <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want it explained why she's not there? Or are you just like not even mentioned? Like, if they say she got a rocket to the face or something, or I say let's not even mention it. Don't even, yeah. Don't even bother with the <laughs> That works for me. Um, hmm. What would make me cross? Uh, bringing back some other character that's died somehow what? would annoy me. Cad Bane. Who, who or... we had? Who could who could they bring back that would be just like why? <laughs> <laughs> you mean like someone who's just died in Star Wars in general, like not even necessarily from the Mandalorian, yeah. like Jabba the Hutt or something? If Jabba the Hutt just turned up, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah it turns out he wasn't not? dead. Like he just was like, Ugh! he's got legs now. He doesn't even need a skiff. He can just walk around in his robot legs. I know that the death thing played out fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, I don't know what would make me cross. Um, well, obviously, Din Djarin dying would make me quite cross, but maybe they could just bring him back. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You are you're I you are right that season two would have been a really great place just to end it. 
um, just because the emotional impact and there's just so much you can do to, you know how when before the prequels even, at the end of The Return of the Jedi, obviously you spend your childhood imagining what happens next. Yeah. And we could have been free to do that. Like what? So what happened with uh, Luke and Grogu? What did that look like? What did didn't go and do? And you could have just made up your own little fan fiction that suited you just perfectly. But now I just hope that we don't flush things out so much that it... Um, There's no room to dream? I don't know. Loses its magic. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but well, I don't want to sound like a Debbie. I, I, I have confidence that I love this show so much and I love the characters, I'm sure. And the showrunners have been incredible. The directors have been um, very impressive. So... I'm sure that whatever they've planned, whatever they've cooked up, I'm sure I will love because I'm a Mandalorian shill. So I'm here for it. Aren't we all? There. What a, what a, what on a, a positive note. Perfect way to end it there. That That's awesome. <laughs> um, I can't wait to hang out in a few weeks. It's going to be so cool. Um, it's uh yeah it's been a long time it'll be sort of like four years i think since we've uh since we've hung out which would be so cool considering we just sort of just randomly bumped into each other at chicago all those years ago so being out to properly hang out and do stuff and go to panels and we'll have to work out if we're in the same panels and stuff it's going to be cool and i'm really excited to sort of show people around a place i used to live and i know it's probably changed a lot in 10 years but they'll still be the bare bones of the the things i recognize but uh tell everybody where they can find you jess um online and other I am on, uh, or and I'm plug, on your, Twitter. plug your hats yeah because my hats are how i pay for these things <laughs> um these trips um on twitter i am at darth underscore schrader that's spelled s-c-h-r-o-e-d-e-r um i haven't been super active lately but maybe in the lead up to celebration i'll try to get on there more and touch base with everyone. Um, and then I have a little knitting side hustle. So you can find that on Instagram um, at Northland underscore knits. So if you live in a cold weather climate, <laughs> I've got you back. Yeah. Actually, I've got your head. Properly made with love headwear and not just made in a factory in China somewhere. And then passed on to, to suckers like, <laughs> like my, <laughs> my friends um awesome well you'll hear a lot more of jess over celebration hopefully she'll be on the celebration blog pods whenever she wants to be whenever she feels like talking whether she's excited or mad or cross or hungover <laughs> or whatever it's going to be we'll get Our her on there yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh thank you so much jess i'll, I'll see you soon thank you for having me yeah, I can't wait to see you. Bye. Bye. May the force be with you.